and you're going to subtract five thousand dollars of networking capital that you're going to need up front. So your cash flow zero is going to be negative one hundred twenty-one thousand. Then cash flows one through cash flow four are all going to be just your operating cash flow of forty-four thousand nine hundred ten. Okay, cash flow five is going to have that operating cash flow as well, but you get that networking capital back, so it's slightly different. It's going to be forty-nine thousand nine hundred ten. So you put in all those cash flows with cash flows one through cash flow four in your calculator. You could make frequency uh, uh, frequency one equal to four, and then cash flow five would actually be cash flow two, right? Or you can just do each one of these um, over and over again four times in a row, and then make cash flow five um, equal to cash flow five, which you see here. Okay. You go over your MPV button, make your I equal to 10%. You compute your MPV and you'll get $52,348.84, which is positive, and you would obviously ex uh, accept this project. Now, if that proposed mini miniature golf course had a salvage value of $17,000, which of the following would outdoor sports need to include when compiling pro forma statements from uh, this proposed investment? Well, which if you can read up all you want about performance statements, but basically it's it's a little bit of the same idea. You need the sales information. Okay, you're gonna want to know about startup cost. You're gonna want to know about after tax salvage value, and you're gonna want to know about any kind of changes in networking capital. Now, the stuff that you wouldn't be that interested in are sunk cost, uh, financing cost, maybe like a change in the required return or something like that. That's not that. Those aren't. You know, that's a percentage that wouldn't even be like a cash flow. So, um, I'm just trying to give you a big hint here for a for an even easier conceptual question on on the exam. Okay. Okay. Suppose another company. Let's keep having fun with this, right? Is consider reopening the go uh, the closed golf course across town and adding its own miniature golf course. If this happens, Outdoor Sports knows it's going to lose some money. Uh, if it built a miniature golf course as well. So as a contingency plan, Outdoor Sports is considering adding an additional driving range to its facility with the hopes that the new golf course across town will revive its driving range revenue. Okay. Now that new range is going to cost $96,000. So there's your initial cost or book original book value with an annual interest of $4,000. We don't care about the interest, right? That's financing. That's a financing cost. And it would be depreciated on a straight line basis over uh, its seven year life with, with zero salvage value. So if I'm trying to find depreciation, I'm going to take 96000 and divide it by seven, and that's my depreciation, right? The anticipated uh, income from this project is $44,000 a year, so there's my sales. With 16600 that being variable cost, that's, that's relevant, so I'd subtract that out. Fixed cost is relevant, so I'd subtract out the 18900 uh, the firm believes that it would earn an additional $14,000 a year for its current operation should the driving range be added. That's a positive side effect, so that's good. Uh, you would add that. Uh, the project will require $7,000 in networking capital. So you're going to, in problem number 35, you would take that out in cash flow zero, add it back in the last cash flow, and the tax rate is 35%. So in this case, what's the operating cash flow? You're going to do this very similar as you did with the problem number 32. Okay, and you should get 19425 Now, 35 is a lot like number 33, okay? But instead of solving for MPV, I'm just going to solve for IR. That's really the only difference here. All right, so what is the internal rate of return on the project uh, if outdoor sports should, it, um, sorry, if it does go with this project? And how do you know whether or not to accept this project, okay? Well, the first thing you're going to do is find out your cash flows, right? So cash flow zero is going to be the initial cost minus that $7,000 in networking capital. And then cash flows one through cash flow six is uh, that operating cash flow from the problem above. That's your $19,425. So you, like on an exam, you'd want to um, probably find that problem first and or remember this information when you see this problem again later on in the exam, okay? But nonetheless, uh, these, you'll see 34 and 35 on the exam, but they may not be back to back. So uh, I'll make sure that you have all the information from 34 and 35. Now, when you put in your cash flow one, you could change that frequency to six and you don't have to enter it six times. In that case, your cash flow two would look like cash flow seven right here. All right. 
Now, cash flow seven is the operating cash flow plus that $7,000 added back, so you'd have $26,425. Instead of doing the NPV button, what you're going to do in this case is hit the IRR button and hit compute. You get 8.61%. That's less than the 10% you need, so you're going to reject this project. Here's a good conceptual question. Outdoor Sports is considering adding a new chipping range to its facility. Which of the following relevant cash flows for this project? The decreased revenue from products currently being offered at the facility if this new chipping range is added to the lineup. So that would be erosion or a negative side effect, so that is relevant. Revenue from the new chipping range, well, sales are always going to be relevant. The cost of a market survey to find out if the customers would be interested in a chipping range. Well, this is a sunk cost because you're going to go out and do this survey, and then you may take the problem, uh, project, you may not take the project, right? So um, that's a sunk cost, and it should be irrelevant into deciding whether or not to accept the project. The cost of a new golf cart track to give customers access to the chipping range, well, that would be a fixed cost that, that would have to be relevant. So the answers there would be 1, 2, and 4, not 3, right? Now you might also see a problem like 37 where I just skip the solving the operational cash operational cash flow uh, step and go straight to trying to get you to give me the NPV or the IRR, in this case the IRR. So you've got a dairy farm project um, that has an initial requirement of $4,000, $458,700 uh, for fixed assets, in this case goats, he's a goat farmer, right? and $61,000 for networking capital front, uh, which you'll get back at the end. The price of this special goat cheese packages, that's what he makes, are $24.76, um, with a variable cost of $13.32 per package. Okay. Now, the goats will be depreciated to a zero book value over the five-year life of the project and be worthless. Uh, why? Because he's not going to sell them. He's just going to give them away as pets. Maybe he's got a little girl or a little boy that doesn't want to see him eaten, so uh, they're not going to have any value at the end. All of the networking capital will be recouped after five years. All right. And uh, the expected annual operating cash flow is 218000 So I already did that step one for you. So like, if you look at back at problems like 32 and problem, uh, sorry, I mean problems number 31 and 34, that those problems you had to get the operating cash flow and here you just um, all you have to do is plug that in okay so this is this problem is going to be very much more like problem 35 so what we will do first is figure out these cash flows and then hit our compute right cash flow zero is going to be the initial cost uh, that's a 458 700 you'd make that negative you subtract off that 61,000 for networking capital you're going to have four years of operating cash flow 218. The last one will have the 218 plus the 61,000 added back. Uh, and then you can compute the RR and you get a big number here at 32.68%. The real issue here is with um, step 38 or problem number 38, right? In the project, in the previous problem, how sensitive is operating cash flow to an increase in one additional goat cheese package? So this gets into sensitivity analysis. And I just wanted to show you some some basic sensitivity analysis. I think we have one other problem that goes into it. But it's a really important concept in finance. Sensitivity analysis, you're not going to get a conceptual question probably based off of this, but it's just going to measure the effect of changes in a variable and you know, or on a variable basis on the project's MPV. Now, the way you do this is that you're going to basically keep constant or fixed. Uh, all the costs except for the one for the variable cost, right? So, uh, to perform a sensitivity analysis, all variables are fixed at their expected values, except for the variable in question, which that's going to be allowed to fluctuate. Okay, and then you're going to look and see how this changes uh, operating cash flow or MPV or something of that nature. And one of the reasons this is important is because this allows you to maybe identify variables that might have a really big impact on profitability or maybe that management should focus on. Um, however, you can sometimes have forecasting errors and stuff like that too. So you might want to take this with a little bit of grain of salt. So let's take a look and see what we have. In, the, in this case, what we're going to measure is the change, not in net present value, but in operating cash flow. So if you look, the equation here for operating cash flow looks pretty similar, except for 
you notice there's no depreciation tax yield, right? There's no subtract um, DT. You take that out because because you're not dealing with that. That's that's going to be fixed. That's not going to have anything to do with the variable here. And then you've got delta in uh, number of units. So whatever that first part of this equation is, S minus VC times one minus T, you're going to multiply that by the number of change of change by the uh, the change in the number of units, right? So in this case, it's only one additional goat cheese package sold. So that's just going to be a one. So uh, all this information we're putting in in this case is per unit here. So the sales per unit is $24.76 minus the variable cost per unit, which is $13.32. And then you're going to multiply that uh, times 0.66. Make sure you realize now there that we, instead of doing sales minus cost, we're just doing sales minus variable cost. I hope you caught that. And uh, then you're going to multiply that by 66% because that's 1 minus tax rate times 1, right? You get $7.55. So uh, if you sell one more goat cheese package, your operating cash flow is going to go up by $7.55. Now we'll have another problem in, in a second that will show you this, but take it a step further with the sensitivity analysis and look at a change in net present value as well. Now here's a problem I do in class and talk about it kind of for fun. Uh, what's the most expensive cow ever? Like what if I'm thinking about a cash cow, what is the most expensive cow in, in, in the world? So there was this cow in Toronto that was once sold for, believe it or not, $1.2 million named Missy, obviously for breeding purposes. But uh, so with that in mind, maybe this uh, little problem here doesn't sound as silly. But... Uh, I was just doing this to kind of uh, prove a point and uh, maybe raise a few eyebrows and give you guys an interesting problem to work. So assume there's a dairy farmer in the previous problem. Uh, assume that that dairy farmer in the previous problem gave his goats away. Maybe he decided uh, the real money was in cows. So he went and make the big bucks off of the bovine and um, he decided to start bringing special cash, crowd, uh, cash cows, which he sells at two different cattle auctions. Suppose the first auction he could sell 16,000 mature female cows per year at $83,000 each and at the more prestigious auction he could sell 1,700 prize heifers per year at $132,000 each. Now, the dairy farmer would also like to sell the bulls but he knows they don't get very much money right it's at the second auction. So, however, he hopes to sell 9,000 bulls per year at $31,500 each at the first auction. Thus, he'll have to increase his trips to the first option, auction and decrease his trips to the second auction. Okay. Now, the dairy farmer has determined that selling the bulls should boost his mature cow sales by 4,000 4, cows sorry, per year, but reduce the sale of his heifers by 850 heifers per year. What amount should be used as the annual sales figure when evaluating this project? And my goodness, that's a wordy problem, right? Uh, and I seriously doubt this, that many special cash cows exist. But what are we looking at here? Well, really, all that's going on here is that he's got this bull project, and he wants to start selling bulls. But he knows that by doing it, he's going to have some positive and negative side effects on his other uh, sales, right? So there's going to be, if he sells the bulls, that's what you want to know. That's your basic sales, right? That's 9,000 bulls times 31,500. That gives you $283,500,000. Now, if he increases, um, if he sells these bulls, he's going to get an increase or a positive side effect in the annual sales from the mature female cows because he's going to that specific auction more, right? So that's going to be 4,000 more of them times 83,000, and that's $332 uh, million, okay? But he's not going to get to go to the, the one auction where he sells his heifers as much, and so he's going to actually have a decrease in the number of annual sales for heifers. So that's 850 times 132,000. So that's negative 112,200,000. So you add those numbers up, the two positives plus the negative, and you get 503,300,000. So that's what, uh, that's the relevant cash flows that you would consider here for this project. Now somebody may say, well, this is just silly. You're talking about cow sale, but what if I was talking about something bigger? What if you were looking at uh, RVs? You know, you might look at uh, RVs and they could be in this price range. So just change out the, the you know, RVs for different types of um, 
camping vehicles or traveling vehicles and you'd have the exact same problem. The main point is just to take a look at how uh, you can have positive and negative side effects on uh, the cells for a project. All right, now you got Bad Boys, right? Bad Boys Incorporates considering buying new equipment. The assets would be in a four-year project, which falls in a five-year Mackers class. What is Mackers? Well, that's just a, this is just a modified tax system, and it's the you know it, you can have either straight line, which is the same amount every year, or Mackers. And if you listen at all for a good conceptual question here, Mackers is mathematically a little bit better because from a time value money per, uh, standpoint you get to take a bigger discount uh, up front right so you're going to uh, depreciate more of your asset up front so you're going to get a bigger tax cut or tax shield using depreciation up front so more money in your pocket up front and that's always a good thing from a time value money perspective now the asset has an acquisition cost of 9.2 million so that's your original book value right or your initial cost and it's going to have a salvage value here of 2.4 million, but that doesn't mean it's its after-tax salvage value, and that's what we got to try to figure out here is the after-tax salvage value. So if the tax rate's 32%, what's the after-tax salvage value? Well, we're in a five-year uh, property class, so you're only you don't care about the three-year column or the seven-year column. You're only looking at that uh, middle five-year column as far as property class columns. Now, what you want to find is uh, after-tax salvage value. And after-tax salvage value, if you look in step two, is the salvage value in year four. Okay, we're looking at the average ta after-tax salvage value in year four. So you could even add a four if you want subscript to after-tax salvage value there. Equals the, so after-tax salvage value in year four equals salvage value in year four plus book value in year four minus the salvage value in year four, all in parentheses, times the tax rate. Okay, and the reason for this is that you may have depreciated too much or not enough and so you have to figure out what which way you did that and see if you should get more money back from from paying too much in taxes or you need to pay a little bit more in taxes okay so to to solve step two we have to do step one because we need book value four now book value four is going to be uh, your book value after four years worth of depreciation so uh, you start with your original book value at 100% and you're going to subtract off 20% which is why you got minus 0 0.2 and then you're going to subtract off 32% which is why you got minus 0 0.32 and then you're going to subtract off 19.2% which is why you have minus 0 0.192 and then you're going to subtract off in year 4 11.52% uh, which is why you have minus 0 0.1152 okay so you do all that and you're left with 17.28% uh, of your original book value, which is 1,589,760. So that's what you would plug in for your book value for in step two. Uh, you already know salvage value of your, because um, that's 2,400,000. So you plug that in twice in that equation in step two, and you're going to get $2,140,723.20. Why? Why is, it, why is your after-tax salvage value less than your salvage value or your before-tax salvage value, if you want to call it that? Well, the reason is, is in this case, you were taking off too much depreciation. You had de uh, depreciated your book value much faster than its actual salvage value. So you have to pay back a little bit of the tax breaks that you got, right? And, that, and so that's what's happened here. Now, if you wanted to, in step one, you could have figured out what each year's worth of depreciation was and subtracted it from the 9,200,000. That's one way of doing it. You could have also just looked and see what was what percentages would have been left. And so you could have looked at years 5 and 6 and say, okay, let me add 11.52% plus 5.76% and I'll have 17.28%. And that's what's left. So let me multiply that times 9,200,000. Either way, that's fine. I, uh, I, I don't really care as long as you're mathematically doing it the right way. Now let's take a look at uh, number 41. Suppose that Good Girls uses straight line depreciation instead of Mackers depreciation. Okay, so Bad Boys uses Mackers. Good Girls is going to use um, straight line. If the operating cash flows are identical for both Bad Boys and Good Girls, okay, so they're going to have the same operating cash flow. Um, then what do we know? Which of the following, I guess, is, do we know? 
Annual depreciation expense for bad boys will be greater than good girls. Well, that's that's a, we don't know that statement. We can't say it's true because we don't actually know when. Um, annual depreciation expense will actually be a greater. There will be a greater depreciation for bad boys up front, but um, but it'll be smaller for them at the end, right? So you got to tell me what year we're talking about. The equipment that we're talking about here will have a higher book value for good girls than bad boys at the end of year two. That's absolutely true. Why? Because bad boys will have depreciated it faster using Mackers. Um, that book value would have already gone down more, so the book value will be higher for good girls at the end of year two. There's no doubt about that. Uh, C, operating cash flow for bad boys is less than that of good girls for year two. Well, the problem above just told you that the operating cash flows are going to be the exact same except for the depreciation effects. And here we know that there will be uh, more depreciation, so a higher depreciation tax yield for, for uh, bad boys. So if you subtract that off, then their operating cash flow is actually going to be, or I guess what I'm trying to say here is um, that this operating cash flow, if you remember, it has that, uh, sales minus cost times 1 minus T plus DT equation. You go back and look at some of those problems, right? Well, if that sales minus cost times 1 minus T is equal for both bad boys and good girls, right? That part's equal. And the only thing that can differ is the plus DT. And so T is going to be the same. So all that can differ here is the D. Well, if bad boys has a higher depreciation, okay, at the end of year two, then it's got to have a higher operating cash flow, all right? So that's why C would be false. The market value of equipment for bad boys is greater than for uh, good girls, and the market value of equipment for good girls is greater than for bad boys. So D and E are both going to be wrong. Why? It's because we're talking about book value here. We're not talking about market value. And even if you could you know make a comparison here you don't even know when as well right so when what year are we saying the market value for one is greater than the other so the the best answer here is obviously B now I promised you earlier that we'd have another uh, sensitivity analysis type question and we'd be solving all the way for the change in MPV well that's this problem here we go suppose bad boys incorporated is also evaluating project that cost 2.13 million has three year life and has no salvage value. Assume depreciation is straight line to zero of the life of the project. Sales are projected at 61,000 units per year. Price per unit is 29.14. Variable cost per unit is 1218. And fixed costs are 411,000 per year. The tax rate is 32% and we require a 13% return on this project. What is the sensitivity of MPV to 100 unit change in the sales figure? Okay, that sounds like a hard problem, but let's take a look. If you remember from the last sensitivity analysis problem, and that was number 38, that you're going to use that equation you see in step one. Change in operating cash flow equals sales minus variable cost times 1 minus T times the change in number of units. Notice that there's no plus the depreciation tax yield here. So you plug and chug the information from the problem, right? Uh, the price at 29.14 for sales, variable cost is going to be uh, $12.18. Uh, 1 minus the tax rate is 68%, and then instead of putting a 1 here like we did in the previous problem, uh, sensitivity analysis problem, here you're going to put in 100 because they're going to want to look at a 100 unit change in the sales figure. Okay, So once you got the change in operating cash flow you of know, $1,153.28, now what you're going to want to do is find the change in MPV. So what you can do is uh, go to your cash flows and just put in the changes that have happened in your cash flows. Well, there was no change in your initial cost. Um, there was a change, though, for the operating cash flows in years one, two, and three. So you will put uh, those three cash flows in for um, years one, two, and three, and you're going to solve for MPV with I equal to 13%. Now you could also have just put in those that change of in operating cash flows as one cash flow and change your frequency to three, and then solve for MPV with I equal to 13%. Either way, you get $2,723.07.
Now also since these numbers are consistent you could have done this with your time value money calculator and made your payments $1,153.28 your future value equal to 0 n equal to 3 and then solve for i with i equal to 13 solve for present value and then you would have gotten your change in net present value and that looks a little bit cut off here but that's also going to be $2,723.07 okay so that's uh, how you would look for a change in net present value and usually with sensitivity analysis you're looking at a change in operating cash flow or maybe a change in net present value and really what you're wanting to see is uh, how if we can change the number of units sold how is that going to affect our bottom line okay so we're getting to some of the last few problems here Boretown industrial tools uh, is, this problem here is going to be a big Mackers problem is considering a four-year project to prove its um, production efficiency They're, they have to spend thirty six thousand dollars over the previous year oh let's say they have already done this right so they have already spent uh, so it'd be, it'd be nice to if I had put a T there instead of a D on spent but nonetheless they have spent thirty six thousand dollars over the previous year researching a new machine press that's marketing cost or research cost uh, it's a sunk cost right so you're not going to worry about it they're going to buy this new machine for $413,000, so there's your original book value uh, or your initial cost. It's, a, it's estimated to result in $213,000 in annual pre-tax cost savings, and that's a weird word, but what that really means is they're tr almost giving you operating cash flow. Uh, they're not quite giving it to you. Uh, they're going to give you the S minus C part, right? So sales minus all relevant cost is going to be $213,000. Okay, and they're going to provide quarterly dividends of $4,500 to the shareholders. That's some financing stuff that you're not really going to worry about. The press falls in the five-year Mackers property class, so that means once again we're using this middle column of the three property class columns, so you can forget the three-year and the seven-year column. Uh, it's going to have a salvage value at the end of the project of $197,000, so that probably tells you right there that we're going to have to figure out the after-tax salvage value. The press also requires an initial investment in spare parts inventory of $39,000. Uh, so that means you're going to have an upfront $39,000 networking capital um, expense. And then you'll get that all back at the end, right? But look here, this is also kind of tricky. Along with an additional $3,500 in inventory for each succeeding year of the project. So not only are you going to take out negative uh, $39,000 in year zero, but you're also going to take out uh, $3,500 in all of the other years except the last year. The last year you get $39,000 plus all of the other $3,500 back. If the tax rate is 38%, okay, what is the after-tax salvage uh, value for the press? And then in the next problem we're going to even find the net present value. Okay, So what I would do, let me see if I can kind of make this a little bit smaller. There we go, that'll put it all on one screen. Uh, you've got a little bit of math here to do. You can find, you could do steps one, two, and three real fast if you wanted to, to find. And we've talked about that. Uh, you can look at, up at the previous problem, I think it's number 40 off the top of my head, uh, where we did find um, book value. So there's a fast way, but I'm going to break this down and get each an year of annual depreciation because I'm going to use that for problem number 44. Okay, so. Uh, you find each year depreciation by taking the book value times whatever percentage you're going to take off for the year. Like year one's 20%, year two's 32%, year three's 19.2%, year four is 11.52%. Okay, <clears throat> so in step one, you find out what all those years of depreciation are. Step two, I'm going to add them together to get my annual, or I'm sorry, my accumulated depreciation, which is basically total depreciation. And you subtract that off of the original book value. In step three, and that gives you book value in year four. So, so after you know four years of depreciation, I'm left with seventy-one thousand three hundred sixty-six dollars and forty cents. Now, if you got book value four, step four, getting the after-tax salvage value for year four is pretty easy. They told you the salvage value in year four is one hundred ninety-seven thousand. So you plug in uh, book value four from step three, and it's plug and chug, and you're going to end up with one hundred forty-nine thousand two hundred fifty-nine dollars and twenty-three cents. So since this amount's lower, this means once again you were depreciating too fast and you had to pay back some of the uh, money that you'd gotten out of tax breaks over the years.
Now, number 44 is kind of crammed in here real fast, uh, but nonetheless, I think you can figure this out if, if you listen carefully. If the discount rate for this project is 9%, should Boretown Industries buy and install the machine press wire? Why not? Well, we know what, what we got to solve for here. Get the MPV. If it's positive, you, you would do this project, right? So the first thing I want to do is figure out my operating cash flow. Okay. Now, my operating cash flow is going to be different for each year because there's a different amount of depreciation. Just look up at step one for each year. However, that first part of that equation will stay constant. That S minus C times 1 minus T will be constant. How do I figure that out? Well, uh, you're going to take the annual pre-tax cost savings, which if you'll go back up and look. Here, I'll take you back up there and let's see. If you look here, you'll see this 213000 uh, That's your S minus C. All right, so let's come back down, and you'll see. Well, I don't see 213,000 anywhere. Well, if you look over here at this 132.60, what we did is we took that 213,000 and multiplied it by one minus t. One minus t is your tax rate. Your tax rate is going to be 38%, um, so that would be 62%. So if you take 0 0.62 times 213,000 dollars, you'll get. 132,060. So that's where that 132,060 comes from, and it kind of confuses some students sometimes. So that's going to be the same amount for each year, but this depreciation tax yield will change, and you multiply the depreciation times tax, and you get those depreciation numbers from step one. Okay. Now, step six is just to get these cash flows in your calculator, and it gets a little bit cramped here, uh, all crammed together. So let me kind of explain. Cash flow zero is going to be your initial cost minus that networking capital. So that's 413,000 or negative 413,000. Uh, I didn't put the negatives on there, but minus 39,000. So it's negative 452,000. Okay. And then the cash flows for year one, two, uh, and three are going to be the operating cash flows minus that additional 3,500 in networking capital that we talked about up in the previous problem. That's kind of weird. That doesn't happen very often, but. Uh, it did in this case. And then in ca then in year four, what you're going to get for that cash flow is the operating cash flow plus 49,500. And you're like, where the heck does the 49,500 come from? Well, that 49,500 is all of your networking capital coming back to you, right? Uh, the 39,000 from year zero and then the 3,500 from the three next years, right? From year one, two, and three. And you add those all together and that's 49,500. And you're also going to then add back in that last year the after-tax salvage value, which is um, $149,259.23, and that came directly from step four. So you add those, th uh, those three numbers together for uh, cash flow in year uh, four, and you get $348,898.72. Now, I scroll down just a little bit more so that you can make sure that, you know, you've got to find the MPV as well, right? So hit your MPV button after you put those cash flows in, uh, set your I equal to nine, hit the down arrow, hit compute, and you get $214,925.87. That's obviously a positive number, so that you're definitely going to accept this project. That's probably one of the problems that requires the most work, um, and I'm not sure whether or not I'll ask that problem on, on the exam. I probably would ask 43, I might not ask 44, but you should know how to do it regardless. All right, and our last problem here is 45. Boy Boyertown Industrial Tools is also considering buying an additional warehouse so that it can create a new line of tools for smaller businesses. Which of the following are cash? Which of the following cash flows are relevant to the new warehouse project? Okay. What about molds needed to form new industrial tools? Well, that's obviously going to be a relevant cost. What about projected increase in tool sales if they are produced? Well, that might be uh, some positive side effects right there, so that would be relevant. An increase in the production manager's current annual salary of $125,000. Well, now you're getting into more of like a financing area of the company, so that's really not uh, going to be relevant. Raw materials used in the production of the new industrial tools. Well, yeah, that's, so now we're talking about some variable cost here, and so that's obviously going to be relevant as well. So one, two, and four are relevant. Three is not. And so hopefully th this has given you a lot of information to think about, and uh, this has helped you understand what math problems you should expect on exam five. Uh, if you have any ex uh, questions, please let me know. If not, 
this concludes lecture 5.3.